Back up! Whoa, whoa. Back up! Chill. It's chill. Keanu Reeves. I hate to intrude, but looks like you're struggling. No, I'm good. Now, the worldwide success of film franchises such as The Matrix and John Wick have helped make Keanu Reeves one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Keanu Reeves had just taken a break from his busy Hollywood life. Keanu Reeves is taking over the internet, from praise about how respectful he is when posing with fans to his Cyberpunk 2077 announcement, everyone can't get enough of Keanu. And decided to visit a store in Texas when a robber attacked the store. What happened next left the robber with so much regret in a way you wouldn't expect. That night, the neon sign outside Vega's market flickered, casting a dull red light on the empty parking lot. Inside, Maria Vega, the store owner, counted the money in the register while her husband cleaned the floor. It was a calm, quiet night, until it wasn't. Across the street, Jesse Morales sat in his old truck, holding the steering wheel tightly. He stared at a photo of his daughter, Sophia, on his phone. She was smiling, and it broke his heart. He'd promised to take her to a festival that weekend, but her mom's warning rang in his ears. No child support by Friday, no visit. Jesse was broke. His mom's medical bills and low-paying jobs had left him with nothing. Desperate, he felt like he had no other choice. At 10.52 p.m., his hands shaking, he grabbed a gun from the glove compartment and hid it in his jacket. Keanu Reeves wasn't supposed to be there. Keanu needed a break that evening, so he went to Austin, a city he liked for its relaxed vibe. This evening, being an unplanned trip, he walked around downtown and ended up at Vega's Market. Surrounded by its simple setting, he felt happy to just blend in and enjoy being a regular person for once. As Keanu opened the cooler door, he heard the soft chime of the store's entrance behind him. At first, he thought nothing of it. Then came the heavy stomp of boots against the tile, sharp and deliberate, breaking the stillness. A harsh voice ordered him not to move, pulling his attention like a gunshot. He turned instinctively and saw a masked man in a worn hoodie. Jesse Morales was standing by the door, clutching a revolver tightly in both hands, its muzzle pointed at Maria Vega, the store owner. Maria gasped and staggered back, her hands shaking as the bills she had been counting fluttered to the floor. She whispered a plea not to hurt them, her voice cracking with fear. Jesse barked at Maria to open the register, his voice rising in panic as he glanced between her and her husband, who stood frozen behind the counter. He insisted that nobody needed to get hurt if she complied. Keanu pressed himself against the end of a shelf, instinctively scanning the room. His heart was pounding, but his mind stayed focused. He took in the details. Jesse's ragged breathing, the trembling of his hands as he gripped the gun, and the desperation in his voice. Keanu could tell that this wasn't someone seeking a fight or a thrill. Jesse then turned his gaze to Keanu, aiming the revolver squarely at him and commanding him to stay where he was and not to try anything. Keanu raised his hands slowly, the gesture calm, unthreatening. I'm not moving, he said, his voice even and composed. There was something in Keanu's tone that caused Jesse to hesitate, his focus wavering for a moment. Beneath the mask, Jesse's eyes betrayed him. They weren't full of malice or calculation. They were wide, frantic, and glossed with fear. Keanu recognized it instantly. This wasn't a criminal hardened by violence. This was someone on the edge of breaking. The weight of it all, the gun, the store, the terrified faces staring back at him, seemed too much for Jesse to bear. One would have expected Keanu to spring into action like in his movies, to move with the precision and speed of a trained fighter. But he knew this was real life, not a script. In real life, the solution wasn't about heroics or bravado. There was no flashy fight sequence or high-octane chase waiting to happen. Just open the register, Jesse repeated, though his voice had softened, almost pleading now. Maria fumbled with the keys, her hands trembling as she tried to unlock the till. Her husband moved slowly, raising his hands higher, his face pale. Keanu remained motionless, his sharp gaze fixed on Jesse. Every fiber of his being screamed to intervene, 
but he knew this moment required more than strength or speed. It needed understanding. He had to figure out how to reach the man behind the mask before the tension in the room snapped and someone got hurt. You don't have to do this, Keanu said softly, his voice steady despite the storm brewing around him. Shut up, Jesse snapped, though the fear in his voice was unmistakable. The gun wavered slightly in his grip, and a bead of sweat rolled down the side of his face. Keanu stayed silent, letting Jesse's words hang in the air, letting him wrestle with his own growing panic. He could feel the fragile thread holding this moment together, and he knew it was close to breaking. Maria's trembling hands hovered over the register keys as she struggled to punch in the code. The small market at the outskirts of Austin had been her and Eduardo's livelihood for the past 15 years. Their American dream etched into every jar of salsa on the shelves. Eduardo stood behind her like a statue, stoic as always in the face of any busted freezer or late delivery. His lips moved soundlessly, saying some prayer. Between them, Jesse's shallow breathing was getting louder by the second. His hand shook on the gun, wobbling the muzzle before jerkily raising toward them again in indecision. He was no man in command. He was a man falling apart. Keanu, still pressed against the shelf at the far end of the store, assessed the scene with the calm precision honed by years of navigating pressure both on screen and off. He'd seen desperation before, on the streets of Toronto as a young man, when he lived paycheck to paycheck, and later, in the faces of fans who confided their struggles in him as though he were an old friend. Jesse's panic wasn't new to him. The trembling hands, the frantic tone, the wild, darting eyes. This was a man cornered by life, holding on to the gun as his last lifeline. You don't want to do this, Keanu said, his voice cutting through the oppressive silence like the strike of a match in a dark room. Jesse spun around, aiming the gun at Keanu as Maria let out a muffled cry, dropping her keys. He barked at her to shut up, his trembling voice betraying his fear. Keanu raised his hands, calm and steady, trying to diffuse the tension. Speaking gently, he told Jesse he understood, that it might feel like there was no way out, but this wasn't control. It was chaos. Jesse hesitated, his grip on the gun loosening as he glanced between Keanu and the terrified couple. Breathing heavily, he demanded to know what Keanu could possibly understand. Taking a step forward, Keanu assured him he did, sharing how loss and hopelessness could overwhelm, but warning that this path would only make things worse. For a moment, Jesse faltered. The revolver grew heavy in his hand as Maria's sobs and Eduardo's pleading eyes broke through. What else am I supposed to do? Jesse whispered, the question carrying the despair of a man who no longer had answers. Keanu took another measured step forward, his presence solid and unshakable, we figure it out, together. The tension in the room felt like a live wire, sparking and unpredictable, as Jesse stood on the precipice of a decision that would define him forever. The room hung in fragile silence, as though holding its breath. Everyone watched Jesse as his next decision could shatter everything, or it could save them all. Jesse's resolve began to crack under the weight of Keanu's words. You don't understand, he muttered his voice breaking. I'm not a bad person. I just, I need the money. My little girl. Keanu nodded, his expression softening. Then think about her. Right now, she sees you as her hero. Is this what you want her to remember? The words hit Jesse like a punch to the gut. His hands trembled violently, and the gun slipped slightly in his grasp. But before he could decide what to do, the door swung open again. A man came in with his daughter. He froze, taking in the scene. What the hell's going on here? He demanded. Jesse panicked, his finger hovering dangerously close to the trigger. The man quickly ran away with his daughter. Jesse's panic surged like a tidal wave, his thoughts a chaotic blur as he stumbled backward. In his desperation to retreat, he knocked into a shelf, sending cans and boxes cascading to the floor with a deafening clatter. The noise shattered the fragile calm of the room. Maria screamed, instinctively ducking behind the counter, while Eduardo seized the opportunity to lunge for the landline phone mounted on the wall. Don't! Jesse yelled, 
whipping the gun toward Eduardo. His finger hovered dangerously close to the trigger, his breath shallow and uneven. But something in his eyes betrayed him. Not malice, but terror, as if he were watching himself unravel and powerless to stop it. Keanu saw the shift and acted, stepping into the space between Jesse and the couple. His hands remained raised, his voice unwavering as he spoke. Jesse. The name landed like a lifeline in the chaos, freezing Jesse in place. Keanu continued, his tone low and steady, each word precise and deliberate. This is your moment to choose, right here, right now. Not tomorrow, not later, now. Jesse blinked, startled to hear his name, his chest heaving as tears began to blur his vision. Keanu took another cautious step forward, keeping his gaze locked on Jesse's. Put the gun down, Keanu urged, his voice softer now. You don't have to let this define you. Think about her, your daughter. What does she need to see when she looks at you? A man who made a mistake or a man who chose to be better? The mention of Sophia hit Jesse like a punch to the gut. His resolve began to crumble, the weight of the gun unbearable in his shaking hand. Behind him, the market door swung open, the jingle of the bell drowned out by heavy boots. A man in a cowboy hat, likely one of the armed locals, had entered, his own pistol drawn. The cowboy barked, Drop it now! Jesse's knees buckled. Tears streamed down his face as he loosened his grip, the revolver clattering to the floor. The cowboy rushed forward, keeping his weapon trained on Jesse, ensuring he didn't move. Moments later, flashing blue and red lights bathed the store, and two officers stormed in, their commands sharp and practiced. As the officers cuffed him, Jesse's body slumped forward, his head hanging low. Shame coursed through him, mingling with relief that the ordeal was over. But as he was led toward the door, he stopped and turned to Keanu, his tear-streaked face a mask of anguish and confusion. Why did you... why did you stop me? Jesse's voice cracked, the question loaded with pain and disbelief. Keanu paused, his dark eyes meeting Jesse's with a look of quiet understanding. He hesitated for a moment, as if searching for the right words, and then spoke with a gravity that cut through the noise of the scene. Because I've made mistakes too, he said simply. But it's never too late to turn around. The officers pulled Jesse toward the squad car, but those words stayed with him, echoing in his mind as the weight of what he'd done, and what he hadn't done, settled in. Sadly, while Dubai has made significant progress toward achieving this goal, there are still challenges that are way beyond their scope, and only a merger with experts in technology like Google can solve them. Before we go into details of how this acquisition will happen, let's first examine the challenges in autonomous transportation it will tackle. Challenges of Dubai's autonomous transportation. In making autonomous vehicles a key part of Dubai's transportation ecosystem, there are challenges Dubai has to tackle. First is the need for smart and adaptable infrastructure. Autonomous vehicles require an infrastructure that can communicate with the vehicles themselves, such as high-definition digital mapping, smart traffic lights, dedicated lanes for self-driving cars, and sensors embedded in the roadways. Though Dubai has modern highways and roads, their roads are not optimized. Another challenge Dubai has is in data management and processing. Since automated vehicles operate based on the principles of the Internet of Things, they generate and depend heavily on large amounts of data from cameras, sensors, and GPS systems for high functioning. To make safe and timely decisions, this data has to be processed in real time. Going by the scale Dubai plans to operate, to make sure the vehicles can function in both urban and suburban areas, there must be systems in place to help it process terabytes of data. And sadly, Dubai is handicapped in this area. After that is the issue of safety. When using automated vehicles, the safety of passengers, pedestrians, and other road users is paramount. Autonomous vehicles rely heavily on sophisticated software and communication systems, which makes them very vulnerable to attacks. Any breach or malfunction could result in accidents, and currently Dubai doesn't have the technological know-how to provide the needed security. But that's not all. 
ensuring that AVs can operate safely alongside traditional vehicles while accounting for human error and varying driving behaviors. As we race towards an autonomous driving future, regulators are looking for ways to keep up with the latest technological advancements while maintaining control over safety. Is another significant obstacle that Dubai is trying to combat. Though autonomous vehicles can contribute to reducing emissions, particularly if they are electric, there is still the challenge of ensuring that the overall energy consumption of a growing AV fleet is sustainable. The demand for electricity to power AVs, especially during peak usage, could strain Dubai's energy grid. Additionally, optimizing AV routes and driving behaviors to minimize fuel consumption and emissions requires sophisticated algorithms and real-time traffic management systems. Lastly, Dubai's autonomous driving technology is still evolving. While progress has been made, the systems are not optimized to handle navigating Dubai's harsh weather conditions, traffic, and even the complicated road networks without human control. Addressing these challenges will require collaboration with a company with expert knowledge in this field, and that's where Google comes in. Dubai's collaboration with Google that can change everything. After many years of research in autonomous driving technology, a group of Google engineers led by two AI and robotics experts, Sebastian Thrun and Anthony Lewandowski, decided to start working on self-driving cars under a project called the Google Self-Driving Car Project. They started by modifying Toyota Prius cars to make them drive without any help. This built on some earlier work that the Stanford Racing Team had done for DARPA challenges back in 2005 and 2007. After almost two years of secretly conducting these trials, the New York Times spilled the beans on it in 2010. This announcement made them the center of global attention with many wondering if they would be able to achieve this feat. And guess what? Fast forward to five years later, Waymo, as the project was now called, completed the project and, to test run it on public roads, handed over the vehicle to a blind man in Texas without any safety driver. A self-driving taxi service called Waymo is coming to Los Angeles. The service already up and running in San Francisco. Rich DeMuro takes us for a ride in one of the cars in today's TechSmart. The success of this trial drive was a huge plus for them. Over the years, Waymo has just kept growing and achieving new milestones. In 2020, they became the first company to offer a public ride-hailing service with no safety drivers. Today, Waymo operates self-driving services in multiple cities, including the biggest one in the world, Phoenix, Arizona. And just last year, they even switched their whole fleet to electric vehicles. Milestones like these show that merging with companies like Google can give Dubai the technology it needs to fix its transportation problems. And rumors have it that Dubai recently did just that. As earlier stated, one of the major infrastructure problems of Dubai is the need for detailed, high-definition digital maps. To ensure these unmanned cars can navigate various environments smoothly, from complex highways to residential neighborhoods, while also receiving continuous updates about construction zones or temporary roadblocks, Google, with their expert digital mapping through platforms like Google Maps, can create real-time maps with the necessary precision for every location in Dubai. In addition to mapping, to ensure the coexistence of human-driven and autonomous cars, Google, through its artificial intelligence obtained from the analysis of Dubai's traffic pattern, can reduce delays and ensure that autonomous vehicles function efficiently, even during peak hours, by synchronizing traffic lights, predicting traffic congestion, and enabling road management. Google's involvement will also aid in deploying the sensors and communication technologies needed for seamless vehicle-to-infrastructure interactions. Roads equipped with sensors and cameras can monitor weather changes, detect hazards, and communicate with vehicles in real time. With Google's expertise in Internet of Things solutions, these sensors can be integrated with the broader smart city network, allowing autonomous cars to react swiftly to unexpected events. As we all know, Dubai's climate is fraught with frequent sandstorms, extreme heat, and dusty conditions that could make it difficult for the sensors and cameras on these vehicles to function properly. Since these sensors are like the eyes and ears of self-driving cars, any interference can impact the vehicle's ability to see the road and make safe decisions. To ensure the safety of the car and its occupants, 
Google's advanced software with its combination of different sensors like radar and LiDAR can help the vehicles navigate even the worst of weather conditions. And if the weather conditions start affecting vehicle performance, Google's cloud-based technology can provide quick fixes through remote updates, ensuring the cars remain safe and reliable. Additionally, heat-resistant hardware and cooling systems developed through this collaboration will help vehicles operate smoothly, even during the hottest days of summer. But that's not even the most interesting aspect of how this merger can hugely benefit Dubai's AVs initiative. Dubai can also benefit from Google's expertise in the aspect of software updates and remote monitoring. With Google now in Dubai's camp, the vehicles are sure to be protected from cybersecurity attacks. Since these cars rely heavily on artificial intelligence, AI, and constant communication with the city's systems like traffic lights and sensors and sensitive information, the system calculates the predicted future behavior for each relevant agent in the scene. Then, with a strong foundation derived from artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, the Waymo driver crunches all that data and calculates a safe route. Like route details and data about passengers, there's a chance they could become targets for hackers. To keep car systems and the networks they interact with secure, Google will use its experience in cybersecurity to build strong firewalls and encryption to protect vehicles from outside attacks. Encryption works like a secret code, making sure that only the right systems, like the car and the traffic network, can understand the messages they send to each other. That way, even if a hacker tries to intercept these communications, they won't be able to make sense of the data without the key to decode it. Another key part of the solution is regular software updates. Just like how our phone or computer gets security updates, autonomous vehicles will also receive updates to fix any weaknesses in their systems. These updates can happen remotely through the cloud, meaning Dubai's cars will always have the latest protection without needing to go to a repair center. Google can also set up multi-layered defenses, meaning having several security checkpoints in place. So, if a hacker tries to get into one system like the car's AI, this defense won't automatically give them access to other areas, such as the sensors or the city's traffic network. This makes it harder for anyone to compromise one part of the system. Another way to protect these vehicles is through constant monitoring. Google can use AI to watch out for unusual activity that could be a sign of a cyber attack, like a vehicle suddenly behaving strangely or communicating with an unfamiliar system. If something suspicious happens, the system can quickly take action, such as pulling the car over or disconnecting it from the network to prevent damage. For everyday users, this collaboration will ensure that data, like their location or personal information, stays private. Google's systems will limit how much personal data is shared and ensure that only essential information, like the car's current position or destination, is transmitted. This way, people can feel safe knowing that their information isn't being misused. Dubai's partnership with Google can also help build public trust in autonomous vehicles, which is key to getting people comfortable with the idea of sharing the road with driverless cars. Even though Dubai is excited about this technology, many people may feel uneasy about relying on cars without drivers, especially since they aren't used to seeing them in action every day. It's natural for people to worry about safety when a new technology is introduced. Adapted for a variety of vehicle platforms, it is the most advanced, fully autonomous driving technology in the world today. And right now, most trials still use safety drivers to monitor the cars, just in case something goes wrong. This shows that even the companies behind the technology understand that people need more reassurance before they can fully trust it. Google's involvement will ensure that the cars are backed by reliable technology and constantly monitored for improvements. And from experience gained from the Waymo project, Google can come up with strategies that are suitable for Dubai. For example, in other places, Google has used pilot programs to let people ride in these cars to see for themselves how safe and reliable they are. A similar approach in Dubai could give residents first-hand experience and help them feel more comfortable over time. Also, Google can support Dubai by providing simple, easy-to-understand information about how the technology works and why it's safe. 
These efforts could include public demonstrations, videos, or community events where people can ask questions and see the cars in action. Over time, as people become more familiar with autonomous vehicles and see them operate safely on the roads, trust will grow naturally. In the end, the goal is to make sure people feel safe and at ease with driverless cars, knowing that they are just as reliable, if not more than human-driven cars. Comparing Autonomous Driving Technology in Dubai versus in China Apart from Dubai and the United States, the autonomous vehicle market in China is growing really fast, and experts predict that it will be worth around $31.6 billion by 2030. And by 2025, about 50% of new cars sold in the country should have some level of autonomous technology. We're turning to the car industry now because the US and Europe have been going after China recently for unfairly propping up its electric car industry. Some of the biggest companies leading this change are Baidu, Pony.ai, and WeRide. For example, Baidu plans to operate in 100 cities by 2030 with its ride hailing service called Apollo Go. Pony.ai is also working on self-driving taxis and delivery trucks, making sure that goods can be transported efficiently. Just recently, the Chinese government selected 20 cities to be part of a special program created to build the infrastructure and systems like special roads and a central control system needed to operate self-driving vehicles. The Ministry of Public Security also shared some impressive numbers. They said that 32,000 kilometers of roads have been set up for testing self-driving cars. Plus, 16,000 special licenses have been given out to companies to test their AV tech on public roads. Right now, at least 19 cities in China are already testing self-driving taxis and buses. One city that is leading the way is Wuhan. Wuhan has allowed a company called Baidu to put nearly 500 self-driving taxis on the roads, which is about 1% of all the taxis in the city. With the rate they're going, Baidu hopes to have 1,000 self-driving taxis in Wuhan by the end of 2024. In Guangzhou, over 1,900 kilometers of roads for testing self-driving cars, including over 260 kilometers of highways, has been set up for AV testing. In addition to that, the city has approved self-driving ride-hailing services from companies like Apollo Go and Pony.ai, which are operating 50 self-driving buses. Beijing, on the other hand, has opened over 1,000, 160,000 kilometers of roads for testing, with 18 companies approved to trial their vehicles. Shanghai has created four special AV testing zones and has 32 companies testing 794 vehicles on over 2,000 kilometers of roads, while Shenzhen has started allowing fully autonomous vehicles without any human drivers on almost 950 kilometers of public roads, including highways and plans to launch 20 self-driving minibuses this year. Meanwhile, in September 2023, Dubai Silicon Oasis DSO, which is part of the Dubai Integrated Economic Zones DS, hosted a really exciting competition about self-driving cars and buses called Dubai World Congress for Self-Driving Transport. Startups from all over the world, 27 countries in total, came to show off their newest ideas and inventions for autonomous vehicles. The startups and students were given access to special testing spaces in DSO to make their projects even better, and at the end of the competition, King Long and Bright Drive, who were participants, won $2 million cash prizes, while some students from Harriet Watt University also got $100,000 for their creative ideas. Though unmanned vehicles presently see the world around them through cameras, sensors, and 3D imaging, there are still limitations to the quality of images produced. To achieve the level of efficiency that is expected of these unmanned vehicles, LiDAR, a technology that uses lasers to create very detailed 3D maps of the environment, has to be adopted. With it, cars would have access to clear data that'll help them make safe and precise decisions. Sadly, since it is very expensive to acquire, many tech automobile companies have decided to settle for lesser alternatives. So to help solve this problem, DSO came up with a special fund called the Diaz Venture Capital Fund. Ten global funds worth a total of some 873 million US dollars have been selected for the second round of this year's Overseas Venture Capital Fund investment project. 
This fund is given to companies with new ideas to improve self-driving car technology. With its state-of-the-art high-tech laboratories, group of companies working on new ideas, access to talented students from universities to help out, alongside the support of a fast-thinking government, DSO will create the next generation of self-driving vehicles. China's aggressive push toward AV development is driven not only by domestic technology companies like Baidu and WeRide, but also through international collaborations. Major foreign automotive companies such as Tesla, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz have established research and development centers in China. These collaborations are vital for knowledge transfer and accelerating technological advancements. The Chinese government has also set clear regulatory guidelines for AVs, including safety protocols, testing procedures, and data sharing requirements, creating a more structured environment for companies to innovate confidently. In contrast, Dubai has chosen an approach that places a strong emphasis on public acceptance and the integration of AVs into the daily lives of its residents. In addition to initiatives like the Dubai World Congress for Self-Driving Transport, the city has launched pilot programs for autonomous ride-sharing and public transport. Dubai's Roads and Transport Authority RTA, has been proactive in conducting awareness campaigns to educate the public about the safety, benefits, and convenience of autonomous vehicles. These efforts are critical, as public perception and trust play significant roles in the widespread adoption of AV technology. By looking at the approaches adopted by the two nations, it's clear that while China is focused on scaling and infrastructure, Dubai is prioritizing public engagement and seamless integration with its smart city initiatives. In the long run, China's scale and speed, along with its focus on infrastructure and international influence, will likely give it the upper hand in the global race. However, Dubai's approach of fostering innovation and seamless integration into everyday life will help it maintain relevance and could offer a model that other smart cities globally may emulate. What do you think of this collaboration? Kindly share your answers, thoughts, and opinions in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this channel to enjoy more videos like this. Also, click the next video shown on your screen. You will enjoy it.